a male in his 70s has a PHS X-ray after presenting with breathlessness. What's the diagnosis? Let's go through the case. This X-ray shows some of the classic features of pulmonary edema. In pulmonary edema, there is an abnormal accumulation of extravascular fluid within the lungs. Now, there are different causes of this, the most common being cardiogenic pulmonary edema, most commonly happening due to left heart failure. There are a wide range of causes of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, including air embolism, neurogenic pulmonary edema, reperfusion, and transfusion-related pulmonary edema. The common factor in all of these is the abnormal accumulation of extravascular fluid. Now, there are three main factors that dictate how fluid moves between the capillaries and interstitial fluid. Firstly, hydrostatic pressure which is the pressure exerted by any fluid in a confined space. So the blood in a capillary will exert some pressure and leak out through its pores into the interstitial space. Then there is oncotic pressure. This is the pressure exerted by cells that can't cross the capillary membrane, such as plasma proteins in blood. This fluid containing proteins will attract fluid via osmosis because remember fluid travels passively from an area of higher water concentration to lesser water concentration. This oncotic pressure opposes the hydrostatic pressure and stops fluid from constantly leaking out of the capillaries. And lastly, we have capillary permeability, which takes into account the leakiness of the vessel wall. Some non-cardiogenic causes lead to direct damage of the alveoli and increased vessel permeability. So anything that affects these three different factors can end up in excess extravascular fluid and pulmonary edema. In left heart failure, blood backs up in the left atrium, then the pulmonary veins, and then the pulmonary capillaries. This increases hydrostatic pressure and leads to more fluid leaking out of the capillaries and ends up with pulmonary edema. A reduction in plasma proteins that can happen in any situation with reduced serum albumin leads to reduced oncotic pressure. More fluid leaks out of the capillaries and again this leads to pulmonary edema. And lastly, some causes of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema can directly damage the alveoli and increase vessel permeability, again leading to pulmonary edema. On chest x-ray, each of these causes of pulmonary edema will result in similar findings which are quite typical, and it's important that we're able to recognise them. But what are these features? Firstly, blood can get redirected to the pulmonary veins which become dilated. The so-called antler sign can be seen when upper low pulmonary veins become prominent. Secondly, edema within the lung interstitium can manifest as the appearance of thickening of the bronchial walls, so-called peribronchial cuffing, and these airways can lose definition, so-called haziness. Interstitial edema can also show as curly V-lines, which show as thin horizontal lines at the lung bases at the periphery, although we don't see them well on this film. On CT, we would see this as interlobular septal thickening. Next, fluid leaks out into the alveoli, causing consolidation. So look for a more fluffy opacity with air bronchograms, which show as small circular lucencies. When fluid accumulation is more rapid, you may get a batwing appearance, like we have in this separate case. Consolidation mainly seen within the right upper zone can suggest mitral valve regurgitation causing pulmonary edema as the mitral regurgitation jet is directed towards the right-sided superior pulmonary vein. And so I have seen cases of severe mitral regurgitation presenting with just right upper lobe consolidation on chest x-ray. Lastly, check the costophrenic angles as fluid leaks into the pleural spaces causing pleural effusions. This is usually bilateral. And when you aspirate and check the protein level, you will find this will be a transidate, unlike infection or malignancy, which will usually cause a pleural exudate. Some of the key signs of pulmonary edema can be summed up with this handy mnemonic. A for alveolar edema, so look for consolidation, which is usually bilateral. B stands for curly B lines, you may see at the lung bases. C stands for cardiomegaly, so if you have a PA film like we have here, an enlarged heart can point more towards cardiogenic rather than non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. D represents vascular redistribution, so look for prominent upper low pulmonary veins. And E stands for effusions, which are usually bilateral, so look at the costophrenic angles. In this case, the pulmonary edema was cardiogenic, with a history of left ventricular dysfunction secondary to ischemic heart disease. As we've discussed, however, pulmonary edema is not always cardiogenic, and there are different ways to classify the causes. One classification that has been proposed has been to divide things up into hydrostatic edema, which includes pulmonary edema secondary to left heart failure and is the most common cause. You then have permeability edema without diffuse alveolar damage. This can happen in drug reactions and air embolism. On imaging, this can be difficult to distinguish, although we tend to see more ground glass opacity on CT than in hydrostatic edema. Mixed edema is when there is a combination of hydrostatic and permeability edema. This includes high altitude, neurogenic, reperfusion, re-expansion, and post-transplant pulmonary edema. Lastly, we have permeability edema, but this time with diffuse alveolar damage. 
This includes ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is mainly a clinical diagnosis, taking into account the pulmonary shunt fraction. This usually occurs as a response to some insult to the lung, such as a severe pneumonia, aspiration, or non-pulmonary causes such as pancreatitis or trauma. The X-ray appearances can be very difficult to differentiate from cardiogenic pulmonary edema, but a pattern of pulmonary edema that persists for days and does not respond to diuresis should make you suspicious. On CT classically, there is more dense consolidation posteriorly, blending into ground glass opacity, and then normal lung anteriorly, although this isn't completely specific. This can be very difficult to treat with a high mortality, and many are left with lung fibrosis. So this x-ray shows us the main features of pulmonary edema, which you can remember with a handy ABCDE mnemonic.